After 150 years of exploration by the Dutch in the 17th and 18th centuries, Australia, or what was called New Holland at the time, looked like this. But the Dutch lost interest. From what they could tell, it lacked both water and fertile soil. It was seen as unsuitable for permanent colonization, and so they simply sailed away in the mid-18th century. The Dutch East India Company replied to one request to colonize Australia, There is no prospect of use or benefit to the company in it, but rather very certain and heavy costs. This created an uncontested opportunity for other European nations to search for opportunities in and around Australia. So, who would try next? Let's go back to my favorite website, raremaps.com, and start where we left off in the last Terra Australis video. We have to scroll through over a century of maps until Australia's shape begins to change again, with this 1774 map. Australia is finally separated from New Guinea, and both Australia and New Zealand are not connected to Terra Australis. This time, it was the British that made contact with Australia, specifically explorer Captain James Cook. But the British weren't the only European nation exploring the area. We need a little context. This mapping and exploration of Australia during this time period, like any other event, was part of a larger moment in world history. It was the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. The seas were once ruled by the Portuguese and Spanish. Then it was the Dutch. But the Dutch Golden Age had just come to an end. The Netherlands' naval and economic edge was dwindling. Larger nations, in terms of both population and land, were finally catching up. Two other European nations now had the advantage, France and Great Britain. And the Age of Enlightenment now dominated Europe. The continent's new confidence in science and reason inspired exploration not just for colonization and trade, but also for science and knowledge. This marks the beginning of modern exploration. One of these scientific voyages was by British captain James Cook. In February of 1768, the Royal Society petitioned King George III to finance a scientific expedition to the Pacific to study and observe the 1769 transit of Venus across the sun. The expedition was approved, but important to this video, the scientific voyage was combined with a confidential mission to search the South Pacific for Terra Australis. The Royal Society suggested command be given to Scottish geographer Alexander Dalrymple who was the main British proponent at the time of the theory that Terra Australis existed. But the Naval Department refused to send someone not educated as a seaman. Instead, James Cook was chosen for his background as a naval officer, but also in mathematics and cartography. Cook's expedition set sail in August of 1768 and reached Tahiti in time to observe the transit of Venus. Cook then opened the sealed second set of orders. The expedition would sail south and search for Terra Australis. In October of 1769, the expedition reached New Zealand, being the second Europeans to visit there, the first being Dutch explorer Abel Tasman and his crew 127 years earlier. Cook and his crew spent the following six months charting the New Zealand coast. They confirmed that New Zealand was not part of Terra Australis, and this map was published upon their return to Great Britain. It is probably the most important map in New Zealand's history. They resumed their voyage westward across the open sea, in April of 1770, they became the first known Europeans to reach the east coast of Australia, making landfall near present-day Point Hicks, and then proceeding north to Botany Bay. The expedition continued northward along the Australian coastline, narrowly avoiding disaster when they became stuck on the Great Barrier Reef. In October of 1770, the damaged ship came into the port of Batavia. They resumed their journey on the 26th of December and reached the English port of Deal on the 12th of July. It was clear that neither Australia or New Zealand were part of Terra Australis. So as usual, the Terra Australis theory was readjusted, with the landmass being further south. And so a new expedition was planned, with Cook as its captain once again. We'll come back to that in a minute. The British weren't the only ones with a new interest in the region. France lost the Seven Years' War, which ended in 1763, forcing them to give up a large portion of their colonial possessions. They were now in search of new colonial opportunities. The French looked to the South Pacific as one possibility. Like Great Britain, Terra Australis theories were circling around France. Their theories came from the stories of a 16th century French explorer who claimed a storm diverted his voyage, causing him to make landfall on what he believed to be Terra Australis. He claimed that it was full of riches, 
and that it was only six weeks sail east of the Cape of Good Hope. There are many theories on where he actually was, Madagascar being a likely candidate, but it's all speculation. Louis-Antoine de Bougainville set out on the first French circumnavigation in November of 1666 with the hopes of finding Terra Australis, but when nearing New Holland, their path was blocked by outer shoals of the Great Barrier Reef. This was two years before Captain James Cook's expedition claimed the east coast of Australia for Britain. In March of 1772, French explorer saint Alouane was sent to find Terra Australis, but instead landed on the already discovered Australian west coast. On Dirk Hartog Island, he buried two bottles of coins with documents declaring the western half of Australia to belong to France, an acknowledged way of making a claim on land at the time. That same month, another French explorer visited Tasmania. Now back to James Cook's second voyage. The purpose of this second voyage was to circumnavigate the globe as far south as possible, and once and for all determine whether Terra Australis actually existed. Two ships were outfitted for this journey, and they set sail for the Antarctic in July of 1772. For three years, the crew searched for the mythical southern landmass, but of course it was never found. After two millennia, the Terra Australis theory was finally put to rest. They sailed into the Antarctic zone on three separate occasions. On the third, they were stopped by ice. Antarctica was never spotted. However, Cook made a correct prediction about a southern landmass. He wrote that, there is a tract of land near the pole, which is the source of most of the ice which is spread over this vast southern ocean. Cook came out of retirement the following year to make a third voyage, this time in an attempt to find the Northwest Passage. He made another stop in New Zealand and was later killed in Hawaii. Around this time, Sir Joseph Banks, a scientist who had accompanied James Cook on his first voyage, was advocating for the British colonization of Australia. It eventually caught traction. The colony made sense to the British. It would provide a base to counter French expansion in the region, and they could send criminals to the colony, which was a practice that was more difficult to continue in North America after losing the American Revolution. The famous First Fleet under the command of Captain Arthur Phillip, with over 1,400 people, which included convicts, but also free settlers as well, left England on the 13th of May, 1787, and arrived at Botany Bay on the 18th of January, 1788. But just six days later, two French vessels on a scientific expedition arrived. The two sides were friendly, and even shared supplies. The French took off six weeks later, and were never seen again. Their wrecked ships were later discovered off the Solomon Islands. In the year 1800, French explorer Nicolas Baden led a scientific expedition to New Holland. He explored and mapped the continent's western coast and a part of the little-known southern coast. 2,500 new species were discovered and documented. The expedition was considered a huge success. The British were surely nervous about the French sailing up and down Australian shores. At this point, the Napoleonic Wars were in full swing in Europe, and the British colony was young and relatively feeble. They likely thought these scientific voyages could turn to colonial ventures at any moment. But the French never seemed to take a large interest in actually claiming New Holland. The 1772 claim by French explorer saint Alarn never really caught traction, even within France. The explorer's death shortly after arriving back in France may have contributed. He likely would have been one of the strongest advocates. In 1789, the French Revolution kicked off. Colonization wasn't exactly a priority during this period, and this gave Britain time to strengthen their claims. In an 1814 book titled A Voyage to Terra Australis, British navigator and cartographer Matthew Flinders wrote, there is no probability that any other detached body of land of nearly equal extent will ever be found in a more southern latitude. So he proposed New Holland should take the name of the mythical southern landmass, but instead of Terra Australis, Australia, because he said it was more agreeable to the ear. As we now know, the discovery and exploration of Antarctica would prove Flinders' statement to be incorrect, but it didn't matter. The name Australia stuck. Before I end this video, thank you RareMaps.com for sponsoring this video. On their website, you can purchase your own antique Australia or New Zealand map, including by James Cook. I actually purchased my own Terra Australis map from them. Again, that's RareMaps.com. I've left a link pinned in the comments below. Also, thank you to my few Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy parts 1 through 3 of this series. You can click the playlist here. Thank you all for watching.